The dream was of an economy built on high finance and high debt. If that's over, what comes next? I'm going to travel from the eastern tip of Britain to the west in search of answers. The fact is, in the last 20 years, social mobility in the UK has declined. And now, for the first time since the 30s, a generation will grow up poorer than their parents. Stoke-on-Trent had already lost most of what it was famous for before the recession struck. The car parks, the wastelands, the warehouses stand on what was once the global centre of the ceramics industry. Staffordshire Potteries, I went straight from school, went to work there with my mother and father, went on to Cartwright and Edwardes, which they eventually shut down. After that, I went on to work at uh, Creedy, which is obviously now shut down. Um, I got finished on there. I ended up on Wedgwoods. I got made redundant from there. And then the last place I worked at, unfortunately, was Remploy, which I worked at for five years. The question for a place like Stoke is, as for Britain, where will the skilled jobs come from? And what's the long-term story? What are we going to be good at? There was lots of innovation, lots of entrepreneurs. There was the 19th century equivalent of the internet, which was periodicals. Those innovators could read what had worked and hadn't worked in other industries. I'm travelling west now into Wales in search of answers. Even the vast Port Talbot Steelworks is now Indian owned and constantly hangs by a thread in the global market. Beyond this last western outpost of heavy industry, you begin to get a sense of what a post-industrial era might involve. And a new vision for Margate. Margate could be a crown, a beautiful crown. Now, I'm going to retrace my steps from West Wales to Margate in search of answers. Where are the decent jobs going to come from in the future? What is Britain going to be good at in the new world economy? St. David's is a city without big business. The microeconomy here is about farming, ecotourism, alternative technologies and surfing. And some companies here are pioneering a new approach to things. But how would you revive a city like Stoke? How do you take existing industries, old skills, the 200-year legacy of industrial capitalism and do something new? If you wanted to fix Britain with eco-business, high technology, social activism and a new kind of manufacturing, well, we've actually got most of the things we need already. But the ultimate test for this vision would be a place like Margate. The gallery's still being built. But with it, small islands of urban cool are springing up. And for Tracy Emin, that's just the start. Dreamland must become a vintage fun fair with lots of old fashioned rides that are really good for the whole family. The old town must have one of the biggest antique markets once a month in Britain, where lots of collectors and different people come. So people from London should be going down there shopping, definitely. Maybe the spirit of cool Britannia's not dead. Maybe its finest hour is now. Margaret could be a crown, a beautiful crown.
This country led the world into the industrial age. If there's now going to be an age defined by low carbon, social justice, high science and super cool design, we could be big in that too. But there's nothing about this green and concrete land that says we're preordained to thrive. We can just as easily decline. It's up to us.